I'm straight, but I slept with my gay roommate. Do you think I'll ever be good enough to get a boyfriend? One who thinks I'm good looking enough. The words slurred out of my best friend and roommate Jules's mouth. He had just gulped down a bottle of wine and was drifting. I turned my head to look at him and noticed the way his green eyes peeked back at me filled with curiosity. I couldn't help it. And the words left my mouth already. Don't be silly, Jules. You're one of the most handsome people I've ever met. Have you seen yourself? You amaze me every day. I was a little tipsy too, so I did not hold back. Jules moved forward and grabbed me by the arm. I screamed, what are you doing? He pulled me down onto the bed next to him. And when I turned around in the moment, I forgot that I had spent all of my life believing I was a straight man. Staring into his eyes, all I wanted was Jules. He smirked at me and spoke. Why don't you tell me just how pretty you think I am now? He yanked at my arm and my body fell on top of his. Feelings burst together in my chest. Was it the alcohol or the fact that I secretly liked Jules since the moment I laid eyes on him? Just for the night, I could bend the rules. Besides, we were both drunk. We would forget in the morning, right? I leaned in closer to him with my heart thumping in my chest as our lips collided and fireworks spread across the canvas of my mind. The best makeout session I had ever had soon turned into more, with hair tugging and clothes being shrugged off. None of it felt unnatural. It felt more like it was all meant to be. My eyes slowly began to open up, and I was immediately welcomed by a headache. I turned to my side and realized that I was not in my bed. I was also shirtless. A few purple bruises lined my neck, and I cursed under my breath when I realized, how could it have happened? The memories flooded back into my mind, and just then, Jules approached me. His tan skin was gleaming in the sunlight as he carried over a warm cup of coffee for me. He smirked at me when he saw the purple bruises on my body, and I instantly started to blush as he spoke. How are you feeling, Will? I gulped. And before I knew it, the words already left my mouth. Did we, I mean last night? He slowly nodded his head and replied, yeah, it happened out of nowhere, but we did sleep together. Something within me was happy. I had feelings for Jules for a long time, and now I knew he felt something back for me too. He kissed me, he slept with me, and he here was giving me coffee in the morning. Jules came and sat down close to me. I raised my eyebrow at him, and he leaned forward. I knew right away he wanted to kiss me, but right before our lips were about to meet. Jules pulled away and I looked at him as he spoke. Um, um before we do anything further, I need to know Will. Are you like bi or maybe gay? I mean, have you thought about your sexuality? I instantly pulled back from him and felt a rush in my throat. I shook my head out of defense right away and spoke. I'm straight Jules, you've always known that about me. I knew I had messed up right away. Jules, wait, hear me out. But it was too late. Jules had left in a hurry after he told me I should figure out my sexuality. He said he wanted to be with someone who was him. A week had passed since the last time Jules came home. He even stopped answering my calls. It was at midnight that I heard the sound of moving keys in the doorknob and I hurried to the living room. I paused right where I was when I saw Jules with his arms around another man. The man was blonde, taller than Jules, and wicked looking. As soon as Jules saw me, he would not meet my eyes. Instead, he slipped his hand into the strangers and spoke up. Uh, Will, this is my boyfriend, Dean. Dean, this is Will, my best friend and roommate. I moved forward to shake Dean's hand, but he did not even bother to return the favor. Instead, he looked at me like he wanted to kill me. I was hurt by the fact that Jules had gone and gotten a new boyfriend out of nowhere. The whole thing made no sense to me at all. The next morning before Jules had woken up, Dean walked up to me and pulled me to the side. I had a feeling it was for nothing good, and I was right. I see the way you look at him, Will. I need you to move on. He's happy with me. I shook my head. But before I could reply, he carried on. It's best if you tell Jules you are moving out so I can take your place. After all, you want him to be happy, don't you? I knew I had hurt Jules when I told him I was straight. I feared he had moved on, and this was my opportunity to let him be happy even when my heart ached for him. Dean to left to work early that morning and I waited until Jules was up. We went to the cafe near our home and I spoke to him. Jules, I think it's best if I move out and leave the place for you to live with Dean in. The shock on his face seemed unreal. He shook his head, and to my surprise, Jules reached over and grabbed my hand. Will, 
You're the only person I am comfortable living with. You know me better than anyone, and why would you push me to live with Dean when you know I'm not ready for that? Do you hate me that much? I shook my head right away and spoke up. It's not that. I just want to make you happy, that is all. Jules wrapped his arms around me and pulled me into a hug as he told me that I make him happy without the need to try hard or do anything extra. As soon as Jules and I returned home, we were met with Dean. He was dressed up in nice new clothes, and before any of us could even understand what was happening, Dean got down on one knee and pulled out a ring. He professed his love for Jules, and in the moment, Jules hugged Dean and said yes. My heart shrank at the thought that I had lost Jules forever, and he was going to marry another man. I still swallowed my hurt and congratulated them both. Just before Jules and Dean were getting ready to go out for dinner, Dean pulled me aside again and told me that he had heard my conversation with Jules, and he would do anything to make sure Jules did not end up choosing me instead of him. A few weeks later, an engagement party was held for Jules and Dean. My friends, Paul and Francis helped me organize the whole thing, and the venue was beautiful. The place was filled with people. Even my own park was invited. My parents did not fully support Jules and Dean, but they knew I had grown up with Jules, so they came for my sake. During the party, one of my old friends, Ashley, walked over to me and tapped me on the shoulder. When I asked her what was wrong, she whispered to me, Well, I realized you to be my date tonight, but when I asked Jules, he told me you're not into me. I felt anger rushing up in my body. Why did Jules tell Ashley this? I told Ashley to wait for me as I went to find Jules. The event was going well. Everyone was dancing to slow music when Paul and Francis pulled me aside out of nowhere. I turned to both of them and noticed the way they looked really scared. So I asked, Guys, what's wrong? Why aren't you out there dancing? The two boys looked at each other a few times before Paul finally blurted out what was going on. Basically, he gave me his phone to take pictures of the event. I accidentally opened a message from what I thought was a friend only to find out Dean has been cheating on Jules this entire time with his co-worker. I could not believe the words that had fallen from my friend's mouth. I looked at them with shock written all over my face. Francis also spoke up. We wanted to bring the news to you since you and Jules are really close. You can tell him and also manage his reaction. I shook my head. I knew that if I told Jules about Dean cheating on him now, the whole event would be ruined and he would have a mental breakdown. Instead, I told both Paul and Francis that it was better if we did not make a move now, and we waited until the event was over to tell Jules everything. Just then, I heard a loud scream, and when I turned around, I could not believe my eyes. In the center of the party, Jules had just pushed Dean away from him. Dean stumbled on his feet and almost fell to the ground. Jules had tears streaming down his face as he yelled, You liar! You cheated on me! You have been cheating on me this entire time! I looked towards Paul and Francis. Francis shrugged and told me that it was possible that Jules might have heard us, while Paul told me I had to go and calm Jules down. I rushed in the middle of their fight, and just when I placed my hand on Jules's shoulder, and just then, Dean looked at me, he blurted out right away, What about you two? You have slept with Will! And I know you told him you still have feelings for him. He continued while the crowds gasped, I only cheated on you because you had feelings for Will. He had outed me in front of everyone, my parents too. My mother had tears running down her face. She grabbed my father's hand and yelled, Never speak to us again! I looked at Dean and finally, anger came out of me. Dean, you are a selfish prick. I tried to stay away and hide my feelings for Jules so you both could be happy, but you cheated on my best friend and there is no excuse for that. Dean moved forward. He was about to hit me. But just then, Jules stepped up and covered for me. He shoved Dean backward and yelled, Will is my friend and he always did the right thing. You and I are over Dean. I was shocked. No one had ever stood up for me the way that Jules just had. And when I looked at him, I felt my emotions and feelings growing towards him. Dean cursed out loud and spoke, You both deserve each other. Jules, I tried to make you happy. Something Will does not do since he is not even sure of his own sexuality. Jules shook his head and shot back. At least Will has been there for me no matter what. He can take his time to discover who he is, that is his choice. Dean cursed some more and the guests gasped before Paul and Francis helped him leave the party they had to drag him out. But it was the best for everyone, since he had already caused so much drama between everyone. I walked towards Jules and offered him my arms 
and Jules ran into them right away. I hugged him tight and told him that I was going to be there for him no matter what. He pulled my body closer to me and whispered, I know you will be there for me. You always have been. I promised Jules that everything was going to be okay, but before we could have more of a moment together, a scream filled the air again. This time, it was Ashley. She quickly took a picture of Jules and I with my arms wrapped around his body. I looked at her and spoke up. What the hell, Ashley? She shrugged her shoulders and held back her tears as she spoke. I wanted you to be my date tonight, and you were lying to everyone the whole time about your sexuality. I've had enough. I'm going to expose you, Will. I had no idea what was going on. I had never done anything bad to Ashley, but I realized that she was just jealous that I had something real with Jules, and she could no longer be with me. I tried to reason with her, but it was too late. She had already posted everywhere, and I knew I was going to lose my job over the scandal because the place I worked at was very traditional and would not accept me being with Jules. I wanted to fight with Ashley, but at the same time, I knew that Jules needed me. I decided that I would deal with her later and told Jules it was better if we headed home and dealt with everything in the morning. Most of the guests had left as well, and the whole party had been a complete mess. When we finally headed home, I was out of breath and tired. I knew that I had been exposed in front of everyone. Even my parents had blocked me, and this was not good news at all. I sat on my bed, staring down at my phone. I could see all the messages from my boss telling me there was no need to come back to work for me, and that I was fired. Just then, I felt a weight beside me on the bed. I looked to my right and noticed that Jules was sitting down next to me. I turned to him, and he instantly took my hand into his. I felt warmth in his touch. He lifted his hand up and placed his thumb under my chin and spoke. Well, I'm really sorry about what happened. Dean should never have exposed you like that in front of everyone. I'm so sorry it happened. I shook my head right away and turned to my side so I could fully face Jules. This time, I was the one who looked at him with a sense of love in my eyes as I replied to him. Jules, it wasn't even your fault. Dean is just a horrible and mean person, and I'm glad you guys broke up. Jules squeezed my hand into his and spoke up. I was thinking, now that Dean showed his true self and we are over, could it be possible for me to have a chance with you? I mean, Will, I've known you since we were kids and I have always loved you. I have known that from the start. I knew I had made the mistake of hurting Jules the last time he was open and honest with me, and I was not going to make the same mistake again. This time, I was not going to lose him or hurt him at all. I moved closer to Jules so that there were barely just inches between the two of us as I spoke. Jules, I have been waiting for you to say something for so long. I wanted to apologize for what I said to you before. I guess I was just too scared. But now that the secret is out, I feel free. Free enough to tell you how much I love you and how I just want to be with you. Jules smiled. It was the first time I had fully seen him smiling like that at me and I knew he was truly happy something I had not seen in him for a long time. Jules moved forward, and so did I until our lips finally met, and we started kissing softly, and the feeling was something out of this world, like it was just the two of us, and all of our problems had faded away. Of course, it did not last for too long, because right away, Jules and I pulled away from each other when we heard a loud knocking sound on the door. We looked at each other, and before we could move away from each other, Jules placed a hand over mine and told me he would open the door to see who it was. I heard Jules gasp, and then suddenly, I heard a familiar voice screaming into the room. Dean. Jules, please I need to have you back. I'm sorry about all of the cheating. I'm sorry about everything. I can't live without you. Please I need you. I stood up immediately, and when I saw Dean, I was shocked. He looked like a mess. His hair was all over the place and his skin looked pale. As soon as he saw me, he moved forward and pushed Jules out of the way. I walked over to him, and I knew that he was causing anxiety for Jules, so I decided to do the right thing as I spoke. Dean, you need to let him go. He doesn't love you. He looked towards me with anger flaring in his voice as he yelled, You! You are the root of all my problems. I'm not going to let you be Will. I'm going to watch your downfall. That was when it all happened. I barely even saw it coming. Dean moved forward and launched his knuckles straight toward my face. I felt the cold blow to my face, and my body stumbled backward. 
I knew right away that he had busted my lip, and I felt the blood dripping down my lips. Just when I looked up, I noticed the vision had gone blurry. Jules pushed Dean back and shoved him out of the door of his home as he yelled at him. That's enough, Dean. I don't want to see you near me or Will ever again. Slammed the door shut in Dean's face. I had no idea what was going on. My head had already started to spin, and I was sure I was about to fall to the ground. Dean had really used all of his force on me. Jules rushed towards me right when he made sure the door was locked. He placed his hand right under my chin and lifted my head upwards. I saw the look on his face changing, and I got scared right away. He took my hand and I whispered to him, Is it really that bad? I noticed the way his face softened towards me, and I knew he was trying to make me feel better. He shook his head right away and led me towards the couch. Slowly, he helped me it and rushed towards the first aid kit. He brought it over and whispered to me, You're bleeding, Will. I'm so sorry I feel so, so bad for everything that happened. I had no idea he was going to turn up like this and cause a scene. I feel so bad for you. I knew that Jules felt bad for me. We had a connection like no other. I winced when he reached forward with a cotton ball and dipped a little bit of it in rubbing alcohol. He narrowed his gaze towards me and looked like he was about to cry as he spoke. Will, I'm going to slowly apply this to your bottom lip. It's going to hurt a little. You can take my hand and press as much as you want when it hurts you, okay? I nodded along. There was something about the way he was taking care of me. He treated me like I was made of glass, and I had no one ever loved me that way. No one even ever looked at me that way. Jules made me feel special. I braced myself and closed my eyes as Jules moved forward and placed the cotton onto my bottom lip carefully. The pain rushed through my body. I screamed out and grabbed onto Jules' hand as tight as I could. I knew that he felt bad just by the way he was looking at me with his eyes full of pity. He pressed the cotton further on my wound as he whispered, It's almost over. Just hold on for a little longer. It's almost over the pain. I'm right here for you. I shook my head as I spoke. Will, it's too much. The pain is taking over me. I squeezed onto his hand tighter. My fingernails dug into his skin further as he pressed. I noticed the way that the cotton was soon full of blood everywhere and I started to feel dizzy. When my eyes rolled to the back of my head, Jules noticed that something was wrong, and he pulled the cotton swab away from my face before he spoke. Will, are you okay? I shook my head. He knew right away that I needed him, and he placed his arm gently under my back as he helped me lie down. I had no idea how strong Jules was, but in a few seconds, he pulled me into his arms, and I gasped. Even when I was feeling out of breath and like I was about to faint, I managed to get a few words out of my mouth. Jules, I had no idea you could carry me. Jules smiled, dimples poked out from the sides of his cheeks, and he smiled down at me as he spoke. Of course I can, silly. Come on, you need some rest. As soon as he had laid me down onto the bed, my eyes had started to doze off. This was the first night that I really did not want to be in bed alone. Jules placed me in bed, and just when he was moments away from leaving me after, he pulled the blanket gently over my body, but I quickly reached forward and grabbed him by the arm. Jules looked at me and whispered, You need to get some rest, Will. You've been through a lot just today. I shook my head. Even when my lip was bleeding, and I was feeling like I would throw up at any given moment, I refused to let go of Will's hand as I barely got the words out of my mouth. Please, stay. I don't want to go to sleep alone. I just want you to hold me. I saw a few tears lingering in his eyes. He had never jumped into bed faster. He wrapped his arms around me and placed a tender kiss on my cheek. I felt the warmth of his body spreading to me and finally, I felt at home. The thought of everything that had happened came back to me and I whispered to Jules from bed. Jules? Yes, Will? He replied and I took a short moment of silence before I spoke. Do you think everything is going to turn out all right? It scared me to my core now that I had been outed, and everything was changing so fast for me that I barely even had the time to cope up with it all. I wondered what was going to happen next. Jules pulled me closer to him and placed a light kiss on my cheek as he hugged me and spoke to me. Everything is going to be alright, even if it is a little bumpy at the start. The important part is that you will not be alone. I'll be by your side no matter what. That was the last thing I heard, 
before I drifted off into a sound sleep with Jules close to me. The next morning, my eyes slowly began to open up to the sound of shuffling and people talking in the background. At first, I had no idea what was going on, and when my eyelids finally fluttered open, I felt like waves were washing over me, and the pain on my bottom lip came back. I heard a familiar voice behind me, and I woke up fully. We cannot tell him that. He's going to freak out. I saw Paul and Jules in the living room of our small studio apartment. Jules had his head in his hands, and Paul looked pretty devastated too. I sat upright and spoke, not tell me what? Both of them turned around right away, and when Jules' eyes met mine, he looked back at Paul. Paul shook his head and walked closer to me as he spoke. Will, something bad has happened. I cursed. I had barely even woken up and things had already started to go wrong. Before Paul could go on, Jules cut him off. But you don't need to worry about it. We are working on it. I sighed and spoke. Still, I need to know what it is. Paul did not wait for another second. He turned his cell phone toward me, and when I looked at the screen, I wanted to vomit right away. The screen displayed Ashley. She was at my old workplace where we were both colleagues, and she was making a video of herself while she yelled out curses about me in the office and kept telling the people there that I had disrespected her, cheated on her with Jules and lied to her, and used her for my purposes to hide the fact that I was with Jules. I looked between Paul and Jules and helplessly tried to explain myself. Guys, none of this is true. I barely ever spoke to her. We never even went out on a date. Paul nodded his head as he added to the conversation. Will we all know that she is just mad at you because she has been in love with you for the past three years? She can't bear to see you happy. I sighed to myself. This was going to ruin my image, especially on the internet. There was no way that anyone was going to hire me or even consider looking at my CV after what happened. And since Dean outed me, there was no way my parents would even pay for my rent. Just when I thought I was doomed, an idea popped into my head and I said it out loud. Guys, I remember one of the interns telling me that Osley was sleeping with our boss. That was enough for the whole situation to be fixed. Paula and Jules called my boss and threatened him that if he did not get Ashley to delete the video and post an apology, we would expose their relationship. Our boss Oliver was married and he knew if his wife found out, he would end up with a divorce and lose his house and his car too. Once the situation had been fixed, Paul began jumping up and down in the living room. I looked at him with worry written all over my face and he blurted out, Good news, Will. Francis just found a job for you at his company and it pays double your last job. I turned to Jules and he hugged me as he whispered, See, I told you, you're never alone. Five years passed and I finally bought a house for the first time with Jules. We both worked and saved up. On the day we received the keys to the house, I decided it was time for me to propose to Jules. I told Francis and Paul all about the plan and they agreed. When Jules entered the house, he looked around and wrapped his arms around me as he screamed, I can't believe we did this. This place is ours. Paul put the music in the background. Francis lit the candles around the new home and I got down on one knee. Jules, you have been the love of my life since the day I laid my eyes on you. Once you promised me that no matter what, we would always go through everything together and you held up your promise to the point that I never want a day without you. Tears were streaming down his face. I slipped the ring onto his finger. He jumped onto my lap and I kissed him with all the passion in my body. I had never loved anyone as much as I loved him. Everyone dances. We drank wine and took pictures together. The day could not have gone any better. We exchanged rings and Jules could not stop talking about the future, a bright future with me. Once the event was over, I checked my phone and realized that I had gotten text messages from my parents. My father and mother had congratulated me on the proposal. Paul must have told them about it. After five years, they finally accepted me once they saw how well I was doing with my life and they finally saw how capable I was and how much Jules added to who I was. I knew I had ended this chapter of my life perfectly as I ever could. With my closest friends by my side and my husband, the man who was also my best friend. Even when we faced struggles at the end of the day, we refused to let go of each other and I was grateful for even the hard times. Without all the troubles, I never would have known how much I needed Jules and what a great couple we made together. Conclusion. After the proposal, two months pass and Will and Jules have an extravagant wedding, Will's parents show up and they finally approve of him being with Jules since they see how good the two of them are together. 
the two of them adopt a dog and start living together full time. As for Ashley, she got fired when her boss was worried in case his wife speculated on anything she moved to another state. Dean got married to the guy he was cheating on Jules with. Even though he still tried to reach out to Jules eventually, he let go of the relationship and moved forward. Paul became a full-time DJ. Francis became head of the company he had gotten the job for Will.